Make America great again. over to Tijuana and we're headed to interview Ignacio Villatoro. His family was separated and is now in multiple states. The children in the U.S. Wow. were separated after they sought asylum. Y échenle ganas, jueguen, no piensen cosas, eh, diviértense ahí, mijos, y les dan estudio, estudiar, aprender inglés, papá. Y no The two children believe that it's their fault and the, the, the children believe that they have been abandoned. He, he said that it broke his heart because his children aren't abandoned, he says. They've just been separated. This area of South Texas sees some of the highest traffic of undocumented immigrants anywhere along the U.S. southern borders. We've been reporting on the number of undocumented immigrants that have been filling up the federal courthouse in McAllen, Texas. All of these undocumented immigrants have been rounded up in what is this zero tolerance policy that the Trump administration rolled out in early May. If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. Before, like during the Bush administration, during the Obama administration, that process wasn't followed unless it was people who uh, had maybe come in three or four different times. But the Trump administration has decided that they want to prosecute, whether it's the first time or your eighth time, this illegal entry charge. And that has really kind of taxed the resources and put a lot of stress on the system. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law. I think when people hear that this is a zero tolerance policy, they might get the impression that this is just the way it is. Like it's this blanket 100% of the way it's being handled. But what we've found in our reporting is that there's an inconsistent and almost arbitrary sense to the way all of this is unfolding. I visited a immigrant children's shelter in Brownsville, Texas, called Casa Padre. It is in the shell of a former Walmart store, and it's enormous. It's about 250,000 square feet, and it holds almost 1,500 boys between the ages of 10 and 17. Now, it's the kind of tour that sometimes reporters derisively refer to as a dog and pony show in the sense that we could only go and see what they wanted us to go and see. So, for example, this video was provided by the federal government, by the Office of uh, Refugee Resettlement. We were not able to speak to any of the children, not able to interview any of the staff who worked there. The Office of Refugee Resettlement and the contractors that work for it have been very reluctant to let anybody in. Obviously, they had allowed us in to try to show that the conditions there are not terrible and that uh, the kids are being treated reasonably well. 
And from that perspective, the shelter is very clean. It's pretty obvious that the kids are, you know, being well fed. At the same time, it is still, in effect, a detention center. We arrived there just as they were going in to have supper. And the line of boys, you know, waiting to, to get food was essentially more than a city block long. The bedrooms where the boys sleep, there's five beds crammed into each one. So, you know, it's a, it's a shelter that is right at the very edge of its capacity. Make America great again.